Some years ago, uh, my old friend Jack Gartside, uh, with whom I shared a, a number of uh, shows and, and United Fly Tires meetings, um, tied uh, a, a uh, what he called a soft hackle streamer, basically palmered marabou to uh, form a streamer body. And uh, I was I was at a UFT meeting when he, he came up with the idea and we batted it back and forth. We did that a lot. Um, but I've, I've, over the years, modified some of his stuff um, to suit specific purposes, and this is one of those designs. Uh, I tied it originally to, to uh, create a, a silver sides imitation, but this, this approach could be used, depending on colors you use, to imitate almost any kind of fairly wide-bodied bait fish and if you reduce the amount of material on the fly substantially, you probably could imitate almost anything, including a sand eel, by using very little material. Uh, the whole thing starts, and I'm using a fairly strong thread here, with a, a thread wrap, and nice uh, touching turns down along the shank of the hook, uh, right along the whole flat of the shank. When the thread hangs down from that, it'll be right in the middle between the tip of the the tip of the hook point and the back edge of the barb. And when you get to that point, you just drop off your excess. And then you take some uh, maybe five strands or so of, of uh, pearl flashaboo. Don't need a lot. And secure that by putting it around your thread, like so. And locking it down. You want that to hang out about three inches behind the fly. Uh, Having done this before, I know that three inches is right at this point on the vise, so I just lop it off right there. Uh, I like to use uh, an olive marabou mixed with a little bit of chartreuse, just to give it a little more visibility. and. Uh, you start this by taking your marabou plume and in this case the dye job wasn't particularly great so I'm just stripping off the stuff that isn't very well colored which leaves me a handle no matter how good your marabou is uh, and how good the dye lot was you're still going to do the same thing and then I'm going to go to the tip of the feather and I'm going to tie that down on the hook shank. Now you don't want to throw away perfectly good material plus you don't want this slippery stuff to slide out of there so just bend it back take a couple turns around it and then just get your thread out of the way. Now as you wrap this around the hook shank, the, the propensity to trap fibers is pretty high. So you have to continually, turn by turn, gently stroke these fibers backward. And moistening your fingertips to do that is a big help. But you want pretty good touching turns of this marabou plume as you do it. The number of plumes that you end up using are dependent on the length of the hook shank because you want to cover the whole thing. 
you can spread out the wraps and put less material on um, so that you have less bulk overall or you can keep it nice and tightly together uh, I like to keep them pretty tight you can see that I'm working it all back and I'm going to have a lot of hook shank left as I get up there that little piece of the quill that I had originally is very handy as a little handle to get all that stuff wrapped on. In case you're wondering what this mess is going to look like when we're all done, it's eventually going to look something like this. <laughs> Cut that excess off. And you can see I've got plenty of hook shank left. And I always wrap that butt end down pretty tight. So now I've got lots of marabou and I've got flash inside it, which will show through when it's wet. We're going to need a little more flash than what I got there, or a little more marabou than what I got there. So we'll do the same thing all over again. And again, peeling off material so that I have my little handle tying it in bending it back and not getting the thread out of the way again Now you're getting a, the effect of a lot of material on the hook, very full bodied, but really haven't spent a lot of time building anything up. It's all bulk built on very soft, fluffy stuff. So that's marabou plumes or full marabou feathers and for those of you that think marabou still comes from marabou storks it doesn't uh, it's from uh, white commercially grown turkeys and this is what the under under feathers are under their hard body feathers so if you know anybody that grows turkeys to sell for Thanksgiving uh, considering that this is the Thanksgiving time of year when I'm doing this, uh, you might want to talk to them about saving some of the feathers that they pluck off all those turkeys and throw away. Uh, very few of the commercial turkey farmers that know that they can sell all those feathers to uh, people who make them into multicolored stuff. Uh, these probably all come from other parts of the world. But I like to add another color. And I do that with what I call marabou puffs rather than plumes. 
because these are smaller. Less full bits of marabou. And you can take that and place it on the hook and just spread it right around the hook shank. Nice loose loop all the way around and you get a nice contrasting color. And we still have way too much bare hook shank. So we'll get another one of those. And that's a terrible one. <laughs> so we'll try again. One of the things that Jack always did very well was to find ways to use the cheapest possible material that he could find to build his flies. Marabou was always pretty cheap stuff and pretty easy to get in his day. Uh, and Jack did know somebody who raised turkeys and I don't think he ever paid for a marabou feather although he had to sell it. If you know somebody who's a duck hunter, they might occasionally shoot a wood duck. Now, wood ducks have uh, lemon flank feathers, lemon colored, and uh, they're a very popular piece of, of, of what's used for Catskill versions of dry flies uh, but they don't have this dark barred tip. The barred feathers are more commonly used in salmon flies. However, they make a very pretty addition to this type of a fly. And you do basically what you did with the turkey, or marabou, if you care to call it that, um, and you tie it in by the tip, Fold that tip back, again locking it down, and then you turn this feather doing the same thing essentially, pulling all those fibers back. tying it down and that creates a little bit of variegation and to me interest mixed in with the marrow. seek out that original little, little piece, the tip that you tied in, and you can just flip that right off because that'll never spread into individual fibers the way you want all this stuff to be. And you just stroke it back. If you have stuff that doesn't pull apart, you can take a dubbing needle or anything and just pick it apart. Because you want basically fibers separated, mix it in with the marabou. And you form a nicely shaped little head. And then to imitate the silver sides, and you notice I'm moistening this to keep it out of my life, Uh, 
we used to use embossed tinsel, it was metal. Uh, we now have something called lateral scale, which is a sort of embossed polyester, uh, which is more translucent, doesn't kink, doesn't do all bad things that embossed tinsel used to do when we were work, first working on these flies. So we can take this lateral scale, which you probably can just about see as I turn it, see it flash, and tie it in on each side, right about in the middle, and it ties down better than metal, metallic tinsel ever did. And then finish that nice head, tie it off. So it doesn't take very long to build up a pretty big fly. It's another very important thing to Jack. Uh, he didn't spend a lot of money on materials and he wanted something he could tie very fast. Because Jack made his living uh, tying flies. And uh, it's been printed several times. Uh, in several places, quoting Jack, that he uh, he never made a very good living doing what he was doing, but he made a great life. Jack essentially fished anytime he wanted, went wherever he wanted, and managed to do it on no money, um, and and lived. A great life uh, from his point of view and uh, he didn't have to stick around very long nor did he. He died from exactly the same cancer that killed his father and uh, lung cancer because Jack was a continual chimney. He smoked all the time including in the shows where uh, there were big signs everywhere that said no smoking and uh, occasionally you'd show up at Jack's table and he'd be under the table. used to call it going into the basement to have a cigarette. Um, but he would do exactly that. And he'd place a couple of uh, silver epoxy eyes in place on the sides of the head and then you dig out your UV varnish and I like to put a bit of it around each eye first step just so that the eyes don't fall off when you're playing with it and uh, give them a little hardening before I even add more, which I'm going to do. The usual 20 seconds or so. While you're doing that, you quite often will find little bits of material that you didn't want there in the first place. So you can 
once you get a little bit of that UV varnish on them, they get nice and stiff and they're really easy to cut off. And then, we take this varnish and we put up a sub pretty substantial coating of it around the eyes and all the way around the head. Jack, of course, never had this stuff available. So he just used a little head cement on the thread. And of course, he never put any eyes on these flies anyway. Occasionally, if he was being real fancy, he might find something he could add to the sides. But very seldom went into great detail. It was mostly the marabou that made this fly work. And it still is. And then we can do that again. And I see another lovely piece of material sticking up. You may be able to pick that up on camera. But I'll get, get it nice and hard and it'll cut off of there real easily. And it lights up so well with this with this blue light. If I keep the blue light on, I can find it very easily. And take it off. And then as I always do, to avoid any stickiness, <laughs> add a coat of head cement or nail polish. In this case, Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails, which I've been using instead of head cement for a lot of years. But it gives it a nice, hard, shiny coat. And there you have a pair of flies that could be silver sides. If you made them gray and silver and shinier, they could be bunker. Uh, just change colors. And it gives you everything you could ever need. One turn of red in this area. You can imitate gills. It's limitless. You can do whatever you want and it's very quick and easy.